This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Alternate Realities. It's a term that gets thrown around uh, quite a bit uh, in the world of the paranormal, but uh, it seems to be sometimes one of the only possible explanations for the strange occurrences that are happening. It's not just, oh, I heard a voice or I saw a strange apparition off in the distance. Sometimes it's things that are clear as day and you don't even realize there's anything paranormal happening until well after the fact. When you return to a specific spot and a building that was there the day before is gone. Where people that you were interacting with and having a relationship with are not there. They can't be found. They simply never existed according to those in the know in those areas. How do you explain such things? Sometimes we hear the term Mandela effect being thrown around. The Mandela effect is uh, that of our memories uh, collectively all seeming to point in one direction. But when we look at the factual history of what we all think we're recalling, that history is something very, very different. Why is this? How do these things happen? How can groups of people have memories of very specific events that they're able to recall in their minds in great detail? different people, different places. And then turns out, no, that's not at all how it happened. That's more on a, uh, a a big macro scale. On a micro scale, these things happen as well. Take, for instance, our next story. Some girls out camping in their teenage years. They meet some boys. They go for a late night walk to an island only to discover The next day, when they recount the experiences of what happened, everything in the seeming reality that they live in is very, very different. Take a listen. In the summer of 1980, I had just turned 14 years old. I was a country kid, and living out in the country allowed every country kid the freedom to run wild. Our backyard was 30 or 40 miles of wooded trails and riverbanks. We were home before dark. We had the long summer days of many adventures in the woods and cooling off with a swim in the river that ran close to where we lived. Every summer, living in the country also allowed you the freedom of camping almost every night during the summer months. We spent most of our time along the riverbanks, swimming, fishing, and camping. The summer of 1980 will stick with me for the rest of my life. The first week after school had let out for that summer, my cousins and I had already planned our first camping trip. My three cousins and I had a spot that we would pitch our tents for the next few nights, and it was right along the riverbank. It was a spot that the boys from school talked about, all the bonfires they had planned on having and fishing they'd be doing. And since myself and my three cousins were all close in age and all four of us girls at the age we were, we were all boy crazy that summer. So the camp spot was a perfect spot to meet up with the boys. Our parents had no clue about the boys that would hang around the spot on the river. So we had the whole week to party. We gathered our camping gear and headed to the river, found our spot and pitched our tents. We spent the first night sitting around the campfire giggling about boys and telling each other ghost stories. The next day was a hot one. By mid-afternoon, my cousins and I decided that it was time for a dip in the river to cool off. And that was about the time four boys showed up with fishing poles in hand. My oldest cousin was the bigger flirt of all of us, and it did not take her long to have one boy wrapped around her little finger. Around dusk, we had ended up around the campfire. We all took turns trying to scare each other with ghost stories. And as the night grew darker, my older cousin and her guy, along with myself and the guy I hooked up with, decided to take a walk along the river before it was too dark to see. 
The four of us walked along the river bank when we noticed what looked like a small island, something no one had noticed before. This small island had a large rock in the center and a small tree. The four of us walked onto the island and sat for an hour or so. It became dark, so we decided it was time to head back to camp. The boys we were with talked about coming back to the island the next day, because it'd be a perfect spot for fishing. All four of the boys said their good night to us girls, and they walked back to their camp that was about a half mile upriver from us. My cousins and I went to bed and slept great that night, being out in the fresh air. The next morning, we expected to see the boys standing along the river fishing. However, when we woke up and looked for them, we saw no one. My older cousin and I walked down the river to the small island we had found the night before, expecting to find the boys there. When we came to the spot of the island, there was nothing there. No island. No boys. Walking back to our camp, my cousin and I were confused about the disappearance of the island and why the boys had not come back as promised. By the time we returned to our camp, my other two cousins were awake. We told them about the island we had found the night before and how we sat there with the boys. My other two cousins just sat and looked at my older cousin and I like we were crazy. They told us that there was no boys who had been at our camp the night before or did my older cousin and I take any walks that night. They told us both that all we did the night before was sat around the fire telling ghost stories and then we all went to bed. My older cousin and I thought they were yanking our chain until they convinced us that nothing like what we told them had happened. So my oldest cousin and I wrote it off as a dream we amazingly had together. It was the last night we would camp at that spot, so we sat up late that night, just sitting quietly, listening to the sounds of the dark. Suddenly, all of us heard voices. These voices were too far away to make out. The words were there, but we couldn't tell what they were saying. It was close enough to know there was more than one person talking. A little scared because it was so late at night for anyone to be out wandering around in the dark, we grabbed our flashlights and went looking for these people down the riverbank. About 200 yards from our campsite, the voices became clearer. We could hear what they were saying. One voice said, Go for it, Tommy. The other voice was saying, I dare you, Tommy. As my cousins and I moved closer, we could tell these people were just ahead and we should be able to see them. However, we saw nobody, but their voices were clear, like they were standing next to us. Looking around, my older cousin and I spotted the small island we found with the two boys. We walked over to the island with my two other cousins behind us. We told them that this was the island we spoke about. Forgetting about the voices for a moment and focusing on the island, we had not noticed that just ahead of us was a bridge looming high above the river. When we realized the bridge above us, it was something we knew we had not seen there before. We knew the area and the bridge was never there. All four of us stood staring up at the bridge with our mouths hanging open. All four saw four boys standing on the edge of the bridge hanging over the railing. All four of them were standing on the edge looking down at the moving river. Our flashlights were not noticed by the four boys above us. My cousin and I moved closer to the bridge to where we were almost standing under it. Our flashlights shining up to the four on the bridge. Looking straight up at the four boys, my cousin and I recognized the four as the boys who would visit our camp the night before. She and I looked at our other two companions with a look like, don't you guys recognize them? The two looked up at the four boys, confused, swearing to us that they had never seen these four boys before. Suddenly, all four boys all jumped from the bridge edge into the river. As my cousin and I watched stunned, the four boys plunged into the river. We stood waiting to see them pop back up to the surface of the water. And we waited. They never came back up. Stunned, my cousins and I ran down river looking for the boys, but we found nothing. Worried about them, we went back to the camp and packed up our things to head back home to tell someone what we saw. On our way back to camp, we came back to the spot where the island was and there was no longer an island. More scared than ever, we ran back to our camp. This time, my older cousin and I had two other witnesses to the island and the four boys. We made it back to our camp and packed up our camp gear. We had everything loaded and we took a second look around making sure the fire was completely out before leaving. As the four of us looked around, we heard the voices again. We went looking for these voices. The four of us started down the riverbank, coming closer to the voices. However, this time we saw no island. 
We found the bridge again and the four boys leaning over the edge of the bridge, then all four then jumping into the river once again. This time it freaked my cousins and me out that we just ran back to our camp and left for home. For months, my cousins and I talked about what we saw that night. We never mentioned it to anyone else and we never went back to that spot to camp ever again. stories online want a commercial free experience of the show with access to the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories sign up at apple podcast right now and try it for three days free ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories